In the previous video, we have created this vertex class. Now we are going to create an adjacency graph class that will store our graph. So let's right click, create C sharp class. Let's call it adjacency graph. Okay, let's open this script up. Now the code for this class will be in the GitHub repository and it isn't very important what we have here for the sake of the pedestrian AI because this is a simple graph data structure. So if you don't feel like implementing a lot of code, you can simply skip the next two videos and copy the adjacency graph.cs script from the GitHub repository and then join me in the video about implementing the logic to create the graph inside the AI director. Okay, let's get going. Great. This script will not be a mono behavior, so let's delete the inheritance. Let's place it in our namespace, our simple city.ai. Okay. And we are going to cut out the class and paste it inside our namespace. And let's delete all the start and update methods because we do not need them. So what is adjacency graph? I have uh, briefly explained. It will be a simple dictionary. It could be also a list. And the main idea is that we are going to store the vertex, so our class that we have implemented in the previous video, as well as the list of vertices that are, are the adjacent vertices to this vertex. And if you are not familiar with the graph data structure, I am explaining it in the previous video about Simple City Builder, so I advise you to check out the previous as a tutorial to understand the graph a little bit better but basically you can implement the graphs as a grid structure so as an array of values to represent the whole map but we can also limit the number of uh, the, the memory that we will need to use by simply using a dictionary and then storing only the amount of data that we need because otherwise we will have the whole grid so i think it is 19 by 19 cells and we will be using this uh, small a number of cells like 10 or 11. We are going to create a dictionary and we are going to pass here a vertex as the key and list of vertex as the value. Let's call it adjacency dictionary equals new dictionary. So this is our graph representation. Now we are going to create public vertex and let's call it add, add vertex. We are going to pass here a vector 3 position. Since we are going to operate on vector 3s in our game. And we are going to check if our get vertex add. And we are going to pass the position is not null. We do not have this method, so alt enter and generate it. So we are going to check if we have a vertex at this position. So if we have, we are going to return now, since we do not want to add another vertex of the same type uh, with the same coordinates. And if we do not have this vertex, we are going to create vertex p equals new vertex, pass to it the position that we have passed to our method. And we are going to call add vertex. And we are going to pass v and return v if you want to use it for anything else. We do not have add vertex with the vertex uh, parameter, so let's alt enter and generate it. Okay, great. And let's start from add vertex. We are going to fill in this method by checking if our adjacent dictionary that contains key vertex or v in our case, if we contain this key, so that's why we have implemented this iEquitable method for our vertex. If we contain this key, we are going to return else we are going to add adjacent dictionary dot add our v vertex and a new list of vertices and now we have our vertex in our dictionary now maybe this is a redundant check since we are checking also here if we have this vertex but nevertheless it's better to check it twice than not check it and have a conflict here or the error because dictionary will throw an error if we try to add another key of the same value Okay, so let's do the get vertex at. We are going to return our adjacent our adjacent dictionary dot key uh, dot keys. 
and we are going to call a first or default. This is a link library method. Alt enter and import system.link and use first or default. And we are going to open the brackets and choose x value from the dictionary is such as compare vectors or ver vertices actually. And we are going to pass here the position uh, of our vertex, uh, get vertex add, so the parameter. And we are going to pass x dot position. And we are going to return it. Alt enter on this method and generate it. And this will simply return if we have a vertex, it will return the vertex. Or if we do not have a vertex uh, with such position, we are going to simply return a null. So we are going to return it to the add vertex. And if this is not null, we are going to return since we have it in our dictionary else we are going to add it to the dictionary okay and here instead of a throwing an exception we are going to return again we are going to type vector 3 square magnitude and we are going to pass the position 1 minus position 2 and if this is less than our 0.0001f this means that those vertices are the same else they are different great next we will need a method to add the uh, connection between those two vertices so if we have a pair of vertices or rather if we have the vertex that is adjacent to another we have an edge so let's create public void add edge and we are going to pass vector 3 position 1 and vector 3 position 2 Okay, since we are using uh, vectors in our uh, code, but we are using the vertices in our graph. So not necessarily the function that will create the edge will know about the vertex. So that's why we are passing the vector threes. And that's why we will need to have this if compare vertices. That's why we have implemented this method because now we can compare the position one and position two. And if they are equal, we are going to return because we do not want to add an edge between the same vertex. Next, so there, there is no point in adding path between the same vertex because if you are in this vertex at this position, you are there uh, already. So that's why we will need to create var b1, so uh, vertex, equals get vertex at position 1. So in case we have those in our dictionary, those will be not null. var v2 equals get vertex at position 2. So in case we have those in our dictionary, we are going to be able to simply add the uh, edge between them and that's it. If our v1 is null, we are going to need to set v1 equals new vertex. And we are going to pass the position 1. And the same for our if v2 equals null we are going to set our v2 equals new vertex position 2 so now we have our two vertices and last step is to simply call add edge between and we are going to this time pass v1 and v2 as the parameters alt enter and generate this method and we will want to add the edge between those in reverse so v2 and v1 since this graph is not directional, so we do not prefer uh, the direction from v1 to v2 only. We want to add it in both ways, so our agent can travel from v1 to v2 and from v2 back to v1. Great. A bit more, so let's create the add edge between. And we are adding the edge between ve uh, vertex v1 and vertex v2. Great, so those are the parameters. And we have some error here. So get vertex at we need to return instead of the object. Let's return the vertex. This should fix the error here. Okay, great. So back in the add edge between two vertices, we are going to check if our v1 equals v2 using our i equitable, we are going to return. Okay. 
and else we are going to check if our adjacent dictionary contains key v1 we are going to check if our adjacent first dictionary v1 first or default so again link library x such as x equals v2 equals null so we do not have the same uh, vertex on our list of adjacent vertices because our list can take two exactly the same uh, vertices as two different values or uh, rather as two uh, spaces in our list so we will need to make sure that we do not add twice the same connection and if this is the case so we do not have on our list the vertex 2 we are going to add adjacent vert uh, dictionary and for v1 and we are going to then add the v2 as the adjacent vertex for the list of adjacent vertices for v1 okay i hope it still makes sense else we are going to call add vertex and we are going to pass v1 so uh, the reason behind it is if we do not have v1 as the vertex of our dictionary we need to add it and then we are going to call adjacent dictionary v1 add and we are going to pass the v2 so we have added uh, those two vertices uh, vertex and the edge so v1 connection to v2 and we are sure that this is added and we are going to do the same for v2 and v1 so if v1 uh, then is not uh, present in our dictionary we are going to add it if it is present we are going to try adding the v1 as its neighbor and that's what is going on here in those add edge between in the add edge function great next let's create another method public list of vector 3 actually a vertex and we are going to return a list of vertex get connected vertices to and we are going to pass vertex v1 and what it will do is check if our adjacent dictionary contains key v1 we are going to return our adjacent dictionary uh, uh, with index v1 and else we are going to return null and again we will need to create the same method for the input of type vector 3 so instead of vertexes add vector 3 position and what we are going to do is let's delete this if statement and we are going to create if our get vertex at position equals now we are going to return now actually we can cache it so let's extract it and type var v1 equals get position if this is is v1 is equal to null we are going to return null else if our adjacent dictionary actually we know that adjacent dictionary has this vertex so what we are going to do is simply we are going to return our adjacent dictionary of v1 since if we get it the vertex go to the definition we are returning the adjacent dictionary dot keys so we know that adjacent adjacent dictionary has this control minus to go back great we will need to create a public void clear graph and we are going to simply call adjacent dictionary dot clear and the last method that we will have is public i enumerable of type ver uh, vertex and we are going to call get vertices and what it will do is it will return us our adjacency graph addic adjacency dictionary dot keys so we will get uh, a list of all vertices in our graph and just for the debug purposes let's override the to string method and what we are going to do here is instead of returning the base to string we are going to create string builder alt enter using system.text builder equals new string builder and what we are going to do is we are going to loop for each our var vertex in our adjacency dictionary dot keys so we are going to loop through each 
E in the dictionary, we are going to type builder dot append line and we are going to pass a vertex string and we are going to add plus vertex to string so it will give us the vertex a form of a string plus open the quotes and we are going to type spacebar neighbors and this is just stylizing the output plus again outside of the quotes string with capital s dot join and we are going to pass here a open quotes comma space so this will be the spacing between the strings and we are going to pass the adjacent dictionary uh, with index vertex so we are going to print all the vertices of this adjacent of this vertex as uh, the adjacent uh, vertices to this vertex and we are going to finish this statement so be sure to type it uh, like this because we are going to type uh, the print the vertex string and we are going to add to it the position of the vertex so vector 3 uh, value as a string next we are going to add the neighbors string and we are going to add a, a string version of the list of our adjacent vertices so we are going to print one by one in the same line the vertices that are adjacent to the given vertex and at the, at the end we want to return our builder to string so it will uh, return a vertex and its adjacent vertices and it will print all of those from our graph so we can easily debug what is wrong okay it was a lot of work so in the next video we will finish off this class by adding an h algorithm so see you in the next video